So the first hose we're, that we're changing is this top radiator hose. So it goes from the radiator over here all the way to the engine over there. And the reason why we're doing this is because of that. Focus, there we go. So as you can see, there's a big split in our bottom hose, bottom radiator hose. Okay, so this is one of the um, really, really bad um, one use clamps that um, the forum thread talks about. Just down, oh, focus, just down at the bottom there um, on, on the hose. So luckily for us, we've got the um, side with the two clips. Um, and that means we can spread the clips out and move the clamp um, just from uh, spreading the clips out using a little screwdriver. Um, and that means we can actually get the clip loose and uh, undo it, which is, which is lucky. But yeah, check out the guide on the forum post if you have problems with this one. So we removed the battery uh, because we think we have to change the battery anyway, um, but that will give us a little bit easier access into some of these hoses. And we're just trying to remove the lower hose join at the very bottom of the radiator. That hose down there. So that is all one piece with a new silicon kit. Some of these hoses, um, one at a time, just to let the coolant drain. So that's the top radiator hose. It goes from the top of the radiator to the top of the engine. And then that's the bottom hose that we need to replace as well. We're also planning to take the expansion tank off at the same time because obviously it looks very dirty and I want to clean that up. Uh, make sure we get all the gunk out of the expansion tank. It's pretty pretty gross in there. Um, and then finally change this hose. Uh, not sure entirely how we're going to do that just yet, but we'll be able to figure that out soon once we get this tank off. Uh, yeah, um, so we had to cut some of these uh, hoses off because it's really, really hard to get rid of them without damaging the hose. We've got replacements for all these anyway, and that, that particular one is all split, which is the whole reason why we're replacing this hose system in the first place. So, don't really mind cutting that one off. Struggling with the bottom radiator hose now. It's actually a very, very complex hose, unfortunately. It's got three separate hoses all coming together into this little junction. Um, and then there's one last clamp that we need to get off. Unfortunately, they're all really, really nasty um, single-use clamps. Um, I'm not sure why they decided to use these from factory, but they're definitely very difficult to get off. Uh, luckily, the aftermarket kit, this one uh, bottom hose is actually just a single piece. Um, I'll show you here. So that's that's the join on the aftermarket one, and then that's the nasty join on the Alfa Romeo one. And they still haven't fixed this issue. If you buy this part brand new from Alfa Romeo, you'll still get the same problem. So that's why you go for the nice uh, silicon hose set from Auto Lusso. Um, we decided it's easier to just take the whole battery compartment out and get this air filter housing out as well. And then we'll be able to access the hoses a lot easier when we install it as well. So we're just taking all this out. Awesome, so we have all the hoses out, taking the battery out as well, because we need to change that, probably. This is the aftermath. Um, so, these clamps, uh, absolutely horrible. Uh, very difficult to undo. This is what it looks like when you undo one of them. So you got to take this little flap and lift it up to release it, but because it's got that retention, um, two retention flaps, really really fiddly really hard to get it all off um, and then on the other side it's even worse because you have to somehow get a tool around that and pull it off um, but that's actually very very stiff so usually the way to do it is to have it um, undo these tabs and generally speaking these pieces here are not uh, facing upwards so you won't be able to get access to that anyway but yeah really really horrible these things Alright, so we've just loosened up this junction box, um, which means that you can actually get access to the other bolt for the thermostat. We'll be changing the thermostat at the same time. It's a recommended thing to do um, on these engines. Um, so there's only three bolts, one, two, three, and you just undo this junction box, and you should be able to get access to that and reinstall it. So this is what it looks like uh, with the thermostat off. 
Um, and we're obviously going to have to clean up the gasket. Uh, we've got a new gasket kit to put in as well. So I put in a new thermostat and the thermostat gasket as well. Just going to put that in and then put the hoses in. Alright, this is our sexy new thermostat. A uh, sexy new silicon hose that goes all the way from the bottom of the radiator to the engine. Um, and we've got some new hose clamps in there which are not nearly as evil as the ones that came with the car. Um, what we've done is we've actually not connected one of the bottom hoses because we're going to start flushing the system with um, water and make sure that all the um, gunk and all the rust is flushed out. Uh, so we'll be connecting that a little bit later. So this one is just the one from the coolant expansion tank. Um, obviously we've taken the coolant expansion tank off, um, but it goes from the bottom of the coolant expansion tank all the way down to the bottom of the radiator, all the way down there. So this one was quite difficult to get to, because um, we decided to try and not take the bumper off. Uh, we managed to get it on in the end, but it was a bit of a tight fit. So if you can't get it on, then you'll probably most likely have to take your bumper off. Um, again, we've just used normal post clamps. Um, down there, so that goes across the goes into the bar, or sorry, goes into the pipe. And it goes all the way across the bottom of the radiator, and this is the last hose that we need to put in. So this one goes from the top of the radiator over there into the top of the engine, and it connects to the thermostat. This is how it controls how much water um, goes into the engine and cools the engine down. Getting a bit worried about that. How much? Thirty five bucks. Cheap bro. How many pages is that? Three and a half. Okay. But that's cheap for cat food. Cat food, like. How long does that um... That lasts for like three months, man. Really? Yeah, because cats don't eat very much. Right, just uh, changing, um, just reinstalling the air filter housing uh, before we put in the battery box. So that's what it looks like when it's installed. There's just two little um, tabs basically that go in at the bottom. Um, you have to go in from the bottom and just have a look to see the alignment and then you just push it down. It's basically just all press fit. Uh, and then after that you install the battery box and then do up this bolt and that holds the air filter housing in place. Battery box is back in. So after we've replaced all the radiator hoses, uh, we are just going to flush the entire coolant system because the old coolant was really dirty, hadn't been changed for probably quite a few years. Um, we also noticed that it was actually using the wrong coolant, um, so someone had put in the green coolant, whereas this one should be using the organic red coolant. Uh, so basically what we're doing is we're just removing this bottom radiator hose that connects to the hard line and that's that's how we're draining the whole system uh, and then once we drain it we just fill up from the overflow bottle again uh, so i've done this quite a number of times now because um, the coolant was really dirty and now the coolant is looking way better and we should be able to drain this one more time and then put in a brand new uh, red coolant again when you're doing the flush you just use water but when you're ready to actually put in the proper coolant, then obviously put in the, the proper coolant um, from the store. So that's the bottom radio ho radiator hose that I'm talking about. And we're just going to pull this off the hard line. Um, and all the coolant should come out into our, our pan. And as you can see, it's already pretty clear. Um, it was really looking very rusty and red before. So this is actually a really clear amount of water. So I think we're going to be able to put in the new coolant now. Right, so uh, we've put a clamp on this bottom hose now uh, so that it's nice and secure against the hard line. Um, I do recommend using these Jubilee clamps because they are a lot easier to remove and a lot easier to service than the standard Alfa Romeo ones that we had to remove earlier on. Uh, so now it should be all ready to be filled up and we'll run the engine, make sure it um, 
cycles the coolant and get any bubbles out of the coolant as well. This is the coolant that we're using. It's uh, organic long life uh, red coolant and this is actually a premix. So sometimes you'll get a concentrate and sometimes you get a premix. Uh, we just got the premix just because it was cheap and, and easier. Uh, hopefully the five liters will be enough. I've got a little bit more in concentrate if we need a little bit more. Um, but it's pretty cheap. It's about 30-40 bucks um, NZ. Yep, so use a funnel if you feel a bit more comfortable with a funnel. Um, pour it in slowly. Don't try and fill it in too quickly because otherwise it'll just bubble up and you'll get coolant everywhere. Um, and then well, I'll update you again once this is almost full. Right, so I've filled it up um, probably about halfway up the overflow bottle. Most cars will have a minimum and maximum reading on the side of the overflow bottle. Unfortunately with this one it's really hard to see where the water is just because how, um, how dirty and corroded the overflow bottle is. Uh, but my tip is you want, probably want to try and fill it up to the minimum level um, and then just run the car and the bubbles will come up and it'll, it'll bleed itself usually. Um, and then the water will also expand when it gets hot. Uh, so don't try and fill it up to maximum level because otherwise you might have um, coolant going over um, the top of the overflow bottle. Um, so at least for now, just keep it to around minimum level uh, and then we can always top it up later on if we need to. So now it's time to start the car and um, get the coolant flowing through the engine. Now you'll want to have the heater on high um, and that's just so that the coolant goes through the heater core as well because there'll be quite a bit of coolant in there that you'll need to flush. So definitely while you're flushing the car, make sure that you run the car for five minutes once you fill it up with water with the heater on and then drain the water. And also when you put the coolant in, make sure you turn the heater on because then it'll get rid of air bubbles within the heater core. Um, and you'll probably want to run this for about five minutes with the overflow cap off. Just keep an eye on it. Um, there's going to be bubbles that come up uh, through the overflow bottle. That's how the system bleeds. Uh, but just keep an eye on the coolant level and the overflow bottle. If it gets lower, then top it up and repeat the whole process. Uh, and you should have a car that's ready to go once you finish uh, filling it up. Okay, once everything's up to temperature and you've filled up enough coolant, uh, the last thing to do is just to put the overflow cap back on. Please do not forget this step. Make sure it's nice and tight because it should help to seal the whole system. Thanks for watching.